Um, yep. The pictures will be on the website um, tomorrow, probably. Yeah. All right. Due to the low height of the tank, the uh, interior was cramped for the four-person four crew, with the drivers not allowed to be more than 172 centimeters, five foot six inches tall. Well, um, we can't wait till uh, Nicholas Moran gets in one of these, <laughs> then, can we? <laughs> the commander could be taller with their cupola. So mm. there was uh, one comment on the internet saying, "Yep, I was a six foot three tank commander of one of these, and it was fine because I could stand on the floor and look out the uh, vision slits mm. of the cupola." Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the need for MB. C protection meant that it could not be an oscillating turret and the autoloader that the AMX that AMX liked on all their other tanks. So just quickly for those who aren't, aren't familiar with this, with the French lighter tanks, um, they had a system... AMX-13, the AMX-50... They basically turned the turret into a clamshell, they mounted the gun to the top shell of the clamshell and um, that meant they could get much, much bigger guns into smaller turrets than would otherwise be possible, but uh, it did mean there were gaps in the turret that were normally just filled with bits of canvas and that was no good for keeping out the end of the world. Yeah, um, it also meant that the autoloaders could uh, line up so rounds could be loaded straight in without the barrel having to uh, come return back, to battery. return to the, uh, mm. yeah, return to battery, return to a flat or set position. So you could be, yeah. Yeah, it would just keep on, uh, it would be connected to where the gun was connected to. So the oscillating turret was a great design for most things that most people ever use tanks for. 